Okay, let's talk about this weekend's big heavyweight clash between Zhele Zhang and Joe Joyce. Interesting fight um, and a must-win fight for both guys, but particularly Joe Joyce. I say that because even though Joe Joyce is slightly younger at 38, which is crazy, uh, he's the younger man, but that last fight against Zhele Zhang, which was Joe Joyce's first loss, was a hard loss, you know, he's a bad loss. Whereas Zhele Zhang has a little bit more room for error, I feel. Because, yeah, he's lost before. But against Filip Hergovic, a lot of people actually thought he won that fight. So he, I don't want to say he's got plausible deniability, but it's not as bad a loss. Um, this fight, I find it interesting. And I'm actually finding it somewhat difficult to pick a winner. First time out, just going off from memory, I, I picked Joe Joyce to win. Uh, I thought he would maybe stop Zhele Zhang late. Um, I just felt like Zhele Zhang stamina issues, maybe just a bit too apparent. You know, I, I like Zhang. I like his style. I like the style of both guys. But Zhang in particular, you know, he's a um, you know, big southpaw. He's very accurate. For a big guy, he's quite well coordinated, particularly with his hands. He throws his shots very correctly. Um and he's got that, that kind of sharp shooting, counter punching style. Uh, what I highlighted in the pre fight video for the, the, the first fight was that Zhang is super sharp on the counter early. And he'd need to do that if he wanted to get Joe Joyce under manners. Because Joe Joyce is the kind of fighter who, he, much like the comic book character, the juggernaut, needs a lot of momentum to get going. And if he gets that momentum, he's a very hard man to beat. However, if you can get him under manners relatively quickly, it makes it a lot more manageable. And that's exactly what Zhang did. Zhang was just pulling out every counter in the book. He was getting the right hook over the, the jo uh, Joe Joyce right hand and jab. Um, he was able to split Joe Joyce's jab with his own left hand. And these were hard shots. And he just had a, a knack. He really couldn't miss, for the most part, Zhele Zhang. And he was just piecing Joyce up and obviously inflicted a lot of damage on Joyce and it was really just you know hindsight's a, a beautiful thing it's 50 50 but looking back you know watching that fight the writing really was on the wall for Joe Joyce from early on in that fight because he was just getting pieced up with clean left hands uh, and Zhang as I say he throws him correctly and he's already a big guy so if he's landing cleanly you know he's going to do you some serious damage and I was very impressed with Zhang's performance. And a lot of people were unimpressed with Joe Joyce's performance. And they make valid reasons as to why. But with me, just based on what I saw, you know, I didn't think Joe Joyce did terribly. I just think Zhang was just so much better. And I'm kind of tempted to say, you know, I think Zhang is just superior all around. Because Joe Joyce, I kind of see him and Zhang is having different styles. Zhang is a, a sharpshooting counterpuncher who is quite economical with his shots, and he really only throws a shot if he knows it's going to line up, if he, he's able to set it up and he has confidence it's going to land. Whereas Joe Joyce, he is someone who isn't as conservative. He has like this uh, style where he tries to flood you with shots. He mixes up the power quite quite well, and this is what... Some of his opponents in the past have, uh, have described, they say, you know, sometimes Joyce hits you and you're like, no, I can deal with that. You know, it's not very hard. But then there are other times he hits you and you're like, wow, this guy punches seriously hard. And now some people would use that as a criticism. Oh, Joe Joyce is an inconsistent puncher. I see that as, okay, someone who is going to use a higher volume of shots, but it's going to kind of dampen the power on them sometimes, use them as setup shots. I think that's what Joe Joyce has done quite well. However, against Zhang, someone who does have good eyes and knows how to counter with both hands, Joyce, he couldn't throw those shots, even the shots with little commitment, like just uh, probing jabs, that he's just flicking out there, just using to tap the guard. Zhang was too sharp. And he, he really, he showed Joyce that you're not going to have any contact with me without having to deal with some serious offense. And Joyce... I don't think he ever really got to grips with that. And now I feel like, you know, Zhang really put a beating on Joyce first time around. But then coming into this rematch, 
you could say that Joyce maybe has the benefit of knowing how Zhang is going to approach this fight because that's one thing about Zhang is he has quite a sharp skill set I feel but he doesn't really go beyond it and it makes kind of, it makes sense really you know he's he's had his schooling he's a, an advanced age by boxing standards he's not really going to become too adventurous and look to uh, try new things you know that's how I feel anyway so that kind of gives gives Joyce um, a, a bit of a benefit because he can come in and he knows roughly what Zhang's going to try and do. However, Joe Joyce himself is of an advanced age and even though he probably won't be able to do a whole lot different, I feel like there is maybe some still some room for improvement and I do feel like Joyce, for the most part, is possibly a bit more versatile than Zhang, even though I'd say the the higher quality work comes from Zhang. So it's like a, it's a bit of give and take, you know, both guys have their strengths, both guys have their weaknesses. And because Joyce, I imagine, has a better idea of what uh, Zhang is going to do, it maybe will help him to last a bit longer because he's going to be wary of where Zhang is going to try and attack him. Zhang does a good job of uh, mixing his offense into when he steps around the ring. So, He'll have his uh, weight on the front foot and then the back foot, front foot and the back foot as he steps in a very kind of pedestrian manner, quite a relaxed manner. But what he does from there is when he steps forward and that momentum, it's not much momentum, but it's slight. When it carries him forward, that's when he will line up his left hand. And he does a good job of coming off of the center line to line up the left hand as his opponent, orthodox opponent, looks to jab. Um, and very accurate, the shots. And Joe Joyce was getting a, his jab was getting timed over the top with a Zhang right hook. And so Joyce, he tried to kind of mix in a, a just a probing right hand. It wasn't very forceful, but it was more direct. Um, and once again, Zhang was just able to kind of rip that right hook over. So I think a lot of this is going to come down to how well is Joe Joyce able to draw the sting from Zhang uh moment to moment but also over the course of a fight and I think a lot of that's going to come down to how well does Joe Joyce faint because with the probing shots that he used in the first fight which you know I understood why he was trying to use them but they even those weren't working you know jo Joyce wasn't just looking to swing overhand rights and left hooks he was trying to work his way in but Zhang was just too sharp so even the shots with little commitment Zhang just had him sussed Joe Joyce, I don't know, he was um, kind of befuddled a little bit by uh, Zhang in front of him. Because Zhang, you know, he, he's not a small target. He's there to be hit. But with the sharpness and the way he controls range and, you know, that lead hand was constantly there, constantly engaging uh, the, the lead hand of Joe Joyce, constantly in his face, probably taking away his vision. Joyce just couldn't work around that. He was, um, he, he couldn't get that momentum, as I say, so he was very upright. Because when Joe Joyce loose, loosens up, he can be quite dynamic. Not necessarily, not necessarily quick, but there's a, uh, a perpetual motion, and that's what uh, can be difficult to deal with. So I'm wondering about how well Joe Joyce can get Gilles Zhang to go first and maybe counter that counter. I don't envisage him being able to do it that well, to be honest. I think, once again, it, it comes down to how well Joe Joyce can get a foothold in the fight from early on, how much momentum he can build. So, I, I as I say, I'm finding this to be a difficult fight to, to pick. And I think, you know, based on the videos I've seen from some of the other guys, they're struggling as well. Um, I am very tempted to say that Gilles Zhang just goes out there and does a job on Joe Joyce. However, I do feel like this fight goes longer, you know, by virtue of the fact that Joe Joyce has, you know, he knows what to expect a bit more now. And also a dynamic that I haven't seen many people touch on is the mentality of the fighters. And now, you know, it's always going to be interesting to see how a fighter in Joe Joyce's position can bounce back from adversity and go back in against the guy who really, you know, beat the snot out of him last time out. But Zhang has a certain character type that I am 
keeping an eye on. You know, I, I like Zhang as a character. You know, for someone who doesn't speak English or barely speaks a word of English, his character is quite uh, engaging, I find. And Zhang's got a certain swagger about him, you know. He's like, you know, this massive 40-year-old 40, 40 Chinese heavyweight who doesn't speak English, but he's quite amusing. And uh, I look at Zhang and I'm like, you know what, this guy believes wholeheartedly in his ability. There's this like a, there's a steely look in Zhang whereby he's just really confident, really believes in himself. I'm just wondering, is he the kind of guy who's maybe prone to becoming overconfident? Because he seems like a naturally relaxed guy. Like he kind of walks around and he knows he's the the, the bee's knees. And uh, I'm just wondering if, okay, he's going into a fight, a rematch with a guy who last time out, he just completely um, just poleaxed. Is he the kind of guy who's going to become overconfident and um, maybe not train as hard or maybe be a bit too ambitious with his offense or a bit reckless with his defense and get caught because I, I do think that Zhang does have weaknesses if you can maybe draw the sting uh, maybe get him to commit to his counters a bit too much and make him miss you can make him pay but maybe you can sap his energy as well sap his gas tank and take him late into a fight where I think his work rate is a bit suspect you know maybe he can get a second win but maybe there are stretches where you can capitalize and and outwork him and we know that Joe Joyce does have a good work rate you know maybe the chin can be questioned a lot of people thought that Joe Joyce had a, a granite chin you know I always thought Joe Joyce is tough I, th I still do think he's tough but I don't think he's like teat tough like yeah you can't dent this guy because as many people have pointed out Joe Joyce was stopped in the amateurs and what big punches has Joe Joyce really faced as a pro um, who is the biggest puncher Daniel Dubois but Joe Joyce did a good job of pulling away from those shots for the most part. Joseph Parker, yeah, athletic and quick. Got some explosiveness, but not a massive knockout artist. Um, ironically, you could probably say that, uh, and I know some of you might scoff at this, but the hardest puncher that um, Joe Joyce has ever been in with might be Berman Stavern, although that was a very poor version of Stavern. He was gr like grossly out of shape. Before that, maybe even Ian Lewison. Yeah, Lewison's not um he's not a a high level heavyweight, although he did have a decent amateur background, but he can punch. Like you best believe that. You know, a lot of people who have sparred Ian Lewison, a lot of stories at the gym is like this guy's can seriously bang. Um but once again he was out of shape as well. So yeah, Joe Joyce how tough is he really? His chin's not going to get any better, really, like, honestly. That's, uh, um, but right, enough dilly-dally. What are we doing for a prediction? As I say, I'm tempted to go with Zhang. Uh, I'm tempted to say that he just repeats in similar fashion. However, Joe Joyce, I imagine, Joe Joyce moves well. He's got good legs. His foot speed's actually pretty decent. I'm assuming that he's probably going to come out and... Maybe not just trudge forward like he did before. Maybe look to keep a bit of distance, manage a bit of distance, manage distance a bit better. And if he can get Zhang to go first and commit to the counters, make him miss, maybe tuck up, smother him, because that's the thing. I don't think Zhang's going to fight very well up close. I think if you're at long range, if you're at mid range, Zhang will get you. If you can be up close or you can be outside of range, then you're going to be safe there. It's just how can Joyce get there? I think he will have success. I think there will be times where maybe he's able to close the distance, rough Zhang up a bit, maybe get off some offense, maybe even tire Zhang out. However, I, I still I still just see it being dangerous for Joyce at that mid-range, at that long range. And I think I, I think I still have Zhang win in this one. Because Zhang's skill set is sharp. And if the pace is slow enough, he can maintain that sharpness for long enough to, to really win some rounds and probably win them big. So I'm going to say, I want to go Zhang late stoppage or points. If I'm going stoppage, I'm thinking like around round 10. 
And if it's points, I think he probably could get a UD. I don't know if they're going to be any fishy uh, scorecards. But that being said, Zhang could just do enough to win. Um, oh, man, this is tough. This is one of those fights where I feel like the morning of the fight on Saturday morning, I might just put out another video saying that I changed my prediction. You know what? I think I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Zhang on points. I think it might be close. It might be close, but I feel like Zhang just does enough. Yeah. I'm going to leave it with that for now. As I say, if you see a, a redux, like a little bit of a redo of this prediction video, don't be surprised because this is a, it's a close fight. I think both these guys are evenly matched. Interesting style matchup. Um, it'd be interesting to see the adjustments and, of course, the mentality of both fighters going in. But that's my take on this one. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, uh, who you pick in and why. And yeah, leave it down below, I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you in the next video.